In this tutorial, we are gonna take this photo and we are going to turn it into this photo with nothing but Lightroom adjustments. And we're even gonna use an adjustment that I, I really haven't used yet. And I haven't found much of a use for until I was tinkering around with it for this specific photo. My name is Matt Klaskowski, welcome back. And the interesting part about what we're doing today is it's a photo makeover where I walk you through a whole photo edit from start to finish but I don't always use my own photo. So this one was submitted by Ken McClure, who's one of my customers, so big thanks to Ken. And I think it, it just makes it more interesting, adds more variety, because otherwise you get my same shooting style along with my same photos and then my editing style, but this allows me to take other people's photos and other people's visions for what the photo was and then put some editing style and my suggestions into it. So let's go ahead here and jump in. So the photo starts off uh, really, really dark, and I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure if Ken maybe was going for a little bit more dramatic, or maybe he's just trying to retain some of these highlights that we have back here. So first thing I did is I just want to see what we have to work with here. So I, I cranked up the exposure, and and at first glance, I realized that the darker it looks, in some ways, you know, the better because to me the the really interesting part of the photo is is all right here in the center. There's some interesting light over there. Um, you know, some of the, the branches, there's this little path that comes to the front. So I did realize that, that the darker the photo looks, the more that the light that comes in here stands out. So that's my first indication that I'm, I'm probably gonna have a little bit of a moodier type of an edit to this photo. Now from there, before I get into that, uh, I wanted to crop it. I thought the left side doesn't really have anything interesting. The right side over here doesn't really have anything interesting. Um, so we, we could crop it any way we want. I would say if if it's suited however you wanted to show this photo off, which would be, you know, if it was social media or even in a print, uh, I thought a square crop looked pretty good for this one because it eliminates a lot of that left and that right area and it leaves us this nice little path up front uh, still that we can kind of draw people into the photo. So uh, I thought a square crop looked, looked pretty good for this one. Um, from here, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna bring, I'm definitely gonna keep the photo darker. I'm even gonna bring those highlights down and we, we might come back to those because we're gonna switch over to our masking tools here. So I'm gonna keep it pretty dark and moody and I'm gonna use the masking tools to, to bring that light back in and do it selectively. So first place I would start would be the radial gradient. I'm just gonna drag out a big uh, kind of oval shape here and spin it around, bring it in from the top left across and increase that exposure, increase the shadows, maybe even spread it out just a little bit more there. Okay, so now we're, we're skimming, we're skimming some light across the photo. Uh, one of the things I might do would be hit subtract on this one and just subtract it with, I'd say probably an easy way would just be the brush tool. Uh, hit the left and right bracket key to make it larger or smaller. Just subtract with the brush tool. And all I would do is just paint in that little highlight area there. In fact, I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna to go to my brush settings for the brush tool. So let's hit subtract again, we'll go to brush. Um, and I'm just gonna take my flow setting down to about 50%, just paint over that area right there. Just got a little bit, little bit too bright for me. So I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and create another new mask and I'm gonna do another radial gradient. I'm gonna do the same thing and you're gonna see the, the method to the madness in a second here. I just wanna make it bigger. Okay, I wanna make it overall a little bit bigger than it was. Overlay that. Again, hit the exposure, hit the shadows on both of it. Maybe even extend it out even more than I did. Maybe about there, like so. All right, and then the one thing I will do with this is from the one that I just added here, because I, I, I'm kind of layering these on top of each other. There's a brighter one at the bottom and then there's a, a more subtle one at the top here, but it's larger. And to layer those on top of each other, uh, one of the things I would want to do is I don't want this middle to get too bright. So again, I would go to subtract, uh, probably just keep it simple, take the brush tool. And again, I think I would keep that, that flow setting down, which is kind of like opacity. I'd keep that flow setting about halfway there and then just brush 
in the middle, just brush any place where, where I personally thought it got a little bit too bright and too hot uh, inside of there. Okay, so if we go to our masking panel up here, there's a little eyeball icon up top, we can turn it off and then back on. Again, that's off and then back on. So we think we're, we're well on our way there. Another new mask that I would create uh, would be to take the brush tool and let's paint a little bit of light in to this path here. I'm gonna jump in here for a very quick word from our sponsor. If you are a Lightroom or Camera Raw user, I have AI adaptive presets. And the interesting part about these, they, they work for wildlife photos, they work for skies, they work for landscape photos, and I've also got a portrait one as well. Make sure I put links into the description there. But the cool thing about AI presets is that they use the AI technology built into Lightroom and Camera Raw, and they work for both of them. Uh, they use that AI technology that's built in there to adapt to your photo. So even though they might have been created using the subject or the sky or the background from another photo, they automatically adapt to whatever photo that you start to apply them to. And if you use the previous tip that we just talked about with the amount slider, presets become even more useful. They can be a good creative boost and also a time saver. But once you throw that amount slider in there, then when you apply a preset, you've got a very quick way to go in there and adjust uh, the intensity of that preset for your specific photo. So I do hope you'll swing by and find out a little bit more. All right, we are back in the tutorial here. And the, the same thing I had said before we, we left that was I'm gonna paint a little bit of light with the brush into this path. So we'll just take our exposure setting just up a little bit. You won't have to do too much there. And just paint in fact. And this time I would want my flow up at 100%. I don't really want to, uh, I don't really want to diminish what I'm doing in here. So maybe something along those lines. All right, keep it. Bring that exposure down a little bit right about there i think looks pretty good one last little thing i would add to it is i i always like to i always like to take advantage of any place where there is moody subtle light and when i look at these trees over here over here over here and even a little bit over here when i look at those trees and i see i see that subtle light hitting one side i i want to i want to accentuate it because i think that could look really nice so i'll create another new mask again i'll use the brush tool for it make my brush a little bit smaller with the left bracket key and increase that exposure a bit and then i would just go and paint down the side of that tree here increase the exposure you can see I'm, I'm this is along the lines of what i want to do i just don't want to make it so blatant so just bring that exposure down and by using a feathered brush we really hide our tracks we don't have to we don't have to worry about being exact with it uh, probably even take one down here depending on the brightness and darkness you might need to create a new mask to do each one i don't really feel the need for that in here but uh, i'll just do it with one mask in fact i'm not even really liking everything I did on that last one, maybe just a little bit and stop it before it hits the top there. Maybe a little bit down there. Okay, so let's turn off our masks altogether again. Uh, that's before and that's after. So just with the masks, we were really able to, to I think, put a little bit more life, a little bit more depth into the photo here. Now, there's one more thing that I would do to finish this up. And it's not a tool that, I'll be honest with you, it's not a tool that I use a lot since it came out uh, in the fall of 2023. So we're talking a few months that it's been out. Probably only a handful of times I've actually used the lens blur uh, panel that we have here inside of Lightroom. It's also inside of Camera Raw. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And what it'll do is it's gonna add some blur to it. And I, I actually think it looks, it, for this photo, it looks pretty cool. So we've got a couple of options with it. We can, it's gonna do an automatic subject detection here, which I, I think it did a, a good job. It, it focused us in right over here. Um, it left all this in focus and then everything else falls out of focus. I think it just adds a little bit of interest to the photo. Now, you could change that focus point and focus it where you wanted to. So I could say, I wanted you to focus you know, down here instead, but I'm actually gonna keep the subject focus. And then the only thing that I'll add to it is there's a little button down here where you can paint focus or blur back into the photo. So I'm gonna click on focus and it uses a brush. 
again, I'm gonna keep the size relatively medium to large, but I wanna keep that feather all the way up at 100% because it'll hide my tracks. And I'll focus in a little bit more in this area in the middle. Maybe hit the left bracket key, make that brush a little bit smaller and just add a little bit more focus to that area right at the top there, just to keep that whole middle uh, pretty much in focus there. And since the bottom of the tree is in focus here, I would actually even experiment a little bit with adding these trees uh, back in there. I, you know, that one, I'm not sure I could take it or leave it. It just depends on, on what your personal taste for that. Remember, we're not going for necessarily pure photographic integrity for something like this. We've definitely uh, we've definitely strayed off a bit onto the creative side of things, but th this is a creative edit. That, that was the, the whole point in it, is I think this is one of those scenes. It has some interesting light. It's got a cool little path in there. And I think it's one of those scenes that might have fallen a little bit flat once it hit the computer, um, maybe a little bit disappointed from what it felt like when you were there. And that's where I think some of these creative edits can really come in and help out. Okay, so that's a little bit of lens blur on top of that one. If I were to finish it off, maybe a hair of a dark vignette around it, something along those lines. And then from there, I would probably go back to basic, maybe brighten the whole photo a little bit, do a little bit of push pull where I, I brighten the photo and go back and close in on that vignette a little bit. And that can be interesting. And then there's a lot of micro tuning adjustments you can do to it after you're sitting here looking at the finished product where I'd probably go back. There, there's no right or wrong answer because we did some very creative things to the masks. So there's no right or wrong answer to me. I felt like that middle was a little bit, for me, overly bright. So I could go back to that mask. Um, number one, I thought it was just a little too much of a ray of light that that didn't make sense there. So I would expand it out a little bit and then even, you know, take the exposure down a hair, go to that, that, that more intensive ray of light that we had in the middle there and maybe even take that exposure down just a hair. So it just doesn't necessarily look like a big oval of light in the center there. We're trying to avoid that. So again, there's no right or wrong answer to it. It's kind of finding the, the, the delicate balance for, for what you had for your photo. And then I would say you can always hit the backslash key. You can see the before and the after. Uh, it's stacked in my favor a bit because the photo started off so dark. So any before and after is gonna look pretty dramatic, but we can just do the before and after of the masks just so you can see just, just what adding those masks did to the photo. That's what we started with. That's our after again. There's the before and then there's the after. So hopefully that gives you an interesting idea when you when you get creative what you can do with a photo. As I said, it was that was a very creative approach to a photo, but I do think, I, and I, I can't speak for Ken, but I do think Ken saw something there. He had a certain feeling there and I could see how maybe once that, that photo hit the computer screen, even just brightening it wasn't necessarily bringing back that feeling. So we did some creative edits to help out. Uh, also, while you're here, if you're interested, I did a, another short video on a feature inside of Lightroom Classic that a lot of people don't know about and it can actually be a very useful feature uh, when you're working and trying to organize your photos. So if you're looking for another video to go next, that would be a great place to go.